So let's actually get into this, right? So you run Emacs, uh, you open this file. Uh, this is not an Emacs tutorial, by the way, like how to use Emacs or where to config it. Okay, I will say where, but yeah. So this is a pretty simple config. Now the reason for that is this is that this might not be the first time I'm actually recording this video, and I might have wait a minute. Yeah, all right, I might I might have left the entire video like this. Uh, anyway, let's do a quick thing, right? So I'm gonna go here. Uh, and uh, remove all of it uh, and create it again so you wanna firstly make sure there's no dot emacs dot emacs will override dot emacs dot d slash in dot l also dot config slash emacs slash in dot l make sure these two aren't there I mean you can just wear one but I like this one so dot emacs dot d slash in dot el no oh init.el oh um, that's not supposed to be there alright now if I restart Emacs we got plain Emacs this is what you were looking at so again dot Emacs dot D slash init.el now first thing you probably want to do is get rid of this garbage that nobody likes because if you're using Emacs you don't want buttons Go go back to your VS Code if you want that, right? Uh, so basically, how this language works? Quick overview, right? You got this. Uh, you have a function or a keyword. It doesn't matter. One of these, just you know, it can be a function, but it can also be something like set Q, which changes a global variable. But you get the point, and then just the parameters, right? You can also it can also be just just the like parameters itself like like a list like an array or something but here it's a function and the parameters most of the time right so one function you have here is menu bar mode and you set it to zero or negative one to disable it right if you go to the end of a line in this file and press control x control e you don't have to even restart emacs it just does it for you so this is the menu bar, this was the menu bar, this is the toolbar. You just change it, pretty straightforward. The same with the scroll bar, the, they all have the same names. Scroll bar mode, right, you disable both of them. And now, it's 100 times better already, because no garbage is here. But, there's no line numbers, everybody wants line numbers. Unless you're a psychopath. So global display line numbers mode mode one there's different ways but this one just works all the time and everybody does like this also uh, the the best coders programmers here you obviously want relative lines because those are the best and 100 times better than normal line numbers so you set Q as I said that changes the variable Display line numbers type uh, relative like this and yeah if actually for this one to work you actually have to restart Emacs I, I don't know why but yeah so you restart it go back to that file and now it's relative so that's great let's also change our team now one way you could do this is with load theme and name of the team and T but yeah name of the team after this but I want to demonstrate some other problem that Emacs has so I'll use another way uh, and that is with the command customize themes right it gives you this little menu you can choose any of the default themes not even the default any you have but this is the best default theme don't try to say it's any other theme this is the best one by far so save team settings um, and now there's a problem quit out this what is this I didn't put this here Emacs did and that's that's annoying I don't want Emacs to configure my config that I want to write so um, set queue 
Uh, custom file. Name of the file, right? So I'll do .emx.d slash custom.el for example. You also want to create that file, so custom.el. So it doesn't complain that that file isn't there. And then you want to, well, first of all, you also want to take this uh, and put it into the file already like this. And then you also want to load the file. So unless it will not be loaded, right? So this says to Emacs just to put that in that file. But it doesn't load the file. For that you need to, yeah, load the file manual. So load file, custom file. And now it works the same way. But Emacs isn't going to configure your config. Now it's actually your config, not Emacs's config. Yeah, it, it's really annoying. So, now let's change the font because it's getting annoying when everything loads up like this and I have to press, I have to zoom in a million times. So, for that, there's there's different ways, there's a lot of different ways, but <clears throat> the best one, the, the one I use for no reason, is just the one that works, is add to list default frame a list like this, font dot, and here you do the font dash size, right? So I'll just use monospace for this video, even though that's the default font, and oh no. And then you wanna do like 20, because I wanna have it big, you know. Also a lot of you have smaller screens who are watching this video, so it's gonna be better for you on like notebooks and stuff too. I'm gonna zoom in anyway, I guess. Mm. So. Before I get into any other configuration, I wanna show you kind of one cool thing, and that's Emacs has a really cool like help system. Uh, so there's two cool things, right? If you do Control H F, it gives you a describe function, and here you can type any function. So for example, load file. Uh, yeah, it tells you everything about it, all the arguments, everything, and you can even find like you can just try how the functions are named in here and yeah you might find functions that you didn't know how they're named but you know what you, you what you wanted them to do so you search them and it finds them and then you can use it so that's pretty cool and if you forget how a function works but know the name you can also do that right control h v is describe variable is the same thing but for variables right these are the after set key so custom file it tells you everything. So now another annoying thing that Emacs does is this. Now if you're starting with Emacs, you don't wanna watch a tutorial on how to use Emacs, you wanna go to the Emacs tutorial here. Because that is the best way, it's so good, it's, it's amazing. It'll teach you Emacs in like 10 minutes, it'll teach you everything you need in like 10 minutes. So that that's it's, it's great, you know, and it's not that long. Uh, but after you've done the tutorial, or you learned it some other way because you didn't know the tutorial was so good, you wanna disable this this dumb thing here. So you do that by set Q. Well, what is it? Inhibit startup screen. Uh, T. No, wait. One. No T. I think I think that. that. Yeah, so now you get this, and this is also annoying because it's the same thing as before. It, th there's much less, but it's much uglier. So you want to get rid of this too, and basically now, uh, what this is, you do initial scratch message, and you can put whatever you want in here. So you do this, uh, you make start with that, right? So, oh no. No, it's good. Uh, you just wanna put an empty string. Emacs. And yeah, it's it's not it's not there. It's 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 great. It's empty. It's so clean now. Now the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to add your own key bindings to Emacs. So this is actually pretty simple. You do global global set key. Parenthesis, you do KBD, and here you said you said you type the key binding you want. So you, you use the 
notation emx is everywhere right um by the way it's it's shortly written how it works in the emx tutorial so another reason to go there but one thing i like to do is to switch between buffers quickly and the default key bindings are control x and arrows and that is a terrible key mining so I'll say to control X control P for previous buffer and control N for next buffer also I probably want uh, control X control K for kill current buffer so if I evaluate all of this now I can control, yeah, that works, and I can kill buffers, and it's not no longer there. So another thing I like to do is to set a key binding for um, set key for duplicating lines. Um, now I don't know if there's a default key binding um, duplicate duplicate line. It's all a function, by the way, if you haven't understood that yet. It's all a function, right? Pressing enter to create a new line is a function you can call with alt x. So, yeah, it, it doesn't seem like there's any any default key binding for that. So, we can use like control comma. I've seen that somewhere. I don't even know where, but I've gotten used to it since then. So, I'm gonna use that, uh, right? So, duplicate line. Yeah, and now I can do this. That's that's amazing. I use that so often. So this is all for this video, except you need to sub. sub